um, this is the, 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 the session that is about Agris. Next, uh, Kai. But before I move and I explain what Agris is in, in a nutshell, I would like simply to introduce the organization where that, that is in charge of Agris. This is the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO. This is a specialized agency that leads international efforts to defeat hunger. Our goal is to achieve food security for all and make sure that people have regular access to enough high quality food to lead active and healthy lives. Achieving zero hunger is at the heart of FAO and is so also the contribution of Agris to this um, challenge. Next. So as the theme of this conference suggests to defeat hunger, knowledge is key and sharing is vital. This is something not new in the context of FAO. This, this uh, compromise has been there for many years and FAO uh, has set up a series of knowledge programs to facilitate this. And the idea is to make information produced in FAO's member countries easily to access and usually to reuse worldwide. We want to facilitate what it would be uh, the knowledge sharing, the information sharing among the countries. Is, is the production of, uh, in agricultural science is huge. And it's sometimes produced locally or could be nationally but and also languages that are not necessarily English. How we can as FAO to facilitate this through knowledge programs and through knowledge platforms that help to make this possible. And the objective of all is simply what I was saying before to uh, support the sustainable development goals through the end of hunger, which is one of the uh, objectives of the SDGs. Next. So Agris, if we, would, if we would be in a room, if this would be a face-to-face -face workshop, I would say, how many of you have heard about Agris before? But since the chat is limited, and also you are getting, uh, the number of people that are attending right now is getting high, I would say that Agris is the international information system for agricultural sciences and technology, became operational in 1975. And essentially, in a nutshell, what Agris does is to collect bibliographic information from around the world on scientific, technical, and socioeconomic publications on a wide uh, variety of topics related to food and agriculture or as I will show you later, any found areas of interest. Essentially, we compile the information in a rational, in a systematic way, in a standardized way, and we publish this in a database every single month. Agris is published and released monthly. Next. Uh, why is so important to mention this slide here today? Um, agricultural sciences are applied sciences, and uh, they are not. Um, they are. They have some. Uh, let's say elements that make agricultural sciences a little bit different than other sciences. For instance, uh, there is a lot of research that is being done by private companies and public organizations together. Together, in the sense that both of them are really publishing quite a lot of research. There are a lot of interests as well from the private sector to learn. Um, there is a lot of uh, research that is not peer reviewed and is what in the, um, in the information world we call gray literature, as Ilkay will show later. But essentially it includes theses, reports, includes conference papers, particularly let's keep in mind the reports, uh, research, in a specific country can produce a report. And then um, and this is being shared in, for, um, in another organization. And then there is the, the, also the multilingualism aspect. Um, agricultural sciences don't necessarily speak English only. There is, uh, the multilingualism aspect is very important. 
Next. Uh, essentially, the functions of Agris, can you, can, can you go back? Ah, oh, sorry, no, okay. Agris is composed of two elements. Uh, I will simply mention this very briefly because we are going to go through that later on. It's the Agris Network, which is a community of organizations who collect and contribute with information about food and agricultural literature and participate as well in knowledge sharing activities. And there is also the database that, as I mentioned before, now is 13.5 million structured bibliographic records on agricultural science and technology in 90 languages. Both of them have different URLs. Take note of these URLs. You might want to look at them uh, to go and to double check them after the conference. Next. Well, the functions of Agris essentially the, the, we could summarize in three. First is to produce this database I mentioned. This is our goal. Is this what is populating the knowledge platform I mentioned before? But the knowledge platform also needs to have very modern and uh, mechanisms for uh, retrieval that can help the end user find the information that they are looking for in the database. But this is not only that. We also have to interact with certain genes with those that can increase this search on the web. So to give a, a more accessibility to what is being produced in a small library, in a small place, in a specific country, despite of the language that the documents um, uh, were written. Oh, and next. This is the scope of Agri. So it essentially it reflects the scope of FAO. Uh, there are quite a lot of uh, subject groups uh, in uh, very high level subject groups in FAO, just briefly fisheries, forestry, animal production and health, land and water, agri-food economics. Now, for instance, everybody talks a lot about agricultural innovation, et cetera. Next. And who is using? So what would be potentially the users of uh, Agris in case that, and, and your users in case that you decide to participate. Well, it's very, very, uh, let's say it's, it's not small. I mean, we have students, we have scientists, librarians, researchers, publishers, policymakers, among others. And what is what they are looking for, essentially? They want to find relevant information on their field of expertise without noise. Uh, they want to they want to get better retrieval. They want to get things that are really pertinent to what they are looking for. They also want to access to information that is also published in other language languages rather than English. And besides that, they want to access full text. Uh, they might be also interested in understanding what has been produced, graphically speaking about something during a long period of time in a specific country, despite there is full text or not accessible. Next. This is the Agris Network today in 2021. These colors reflect the number of data providers that we have by country. Russian Federation is by the most, the, uh, the country that has more data providers. But um, yes, it's, it's, as you can see, we have still some gaps, wide gaps, and that we would like really that if we have people in the audience that come from these countries, that, uh, that, that they decide to participate in the Agnes Network and benefit of all what we are going to explain today. We have about 447 data providers and we have 53 pending applications today. It's important to remind you that this is almost 50 years of uh, exchanging information in the context of agri. So some organizations have simply are not there anymore. Uh, they have been dismissed uh, or they simply um, changed the name and they became something else or they merged with another organization. So there are different um, elements that make that um, the, 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 actually the active data providers can be a little bit less than that simply because we have data providers that were providing data in the 70s that they are not there anymore. Next. 
Yes, um, Avis is very, very much used, I would say. Um, and actually this, um, um, this slide shows you that, for instance, in the period of six months uh, from January to June this year, and the same period last year, we received an increase of um, some, um, some hundreds, some thousands of uh, new users and also a relevant increase of sessions. It's quite used. And this is also thank you to what I was saying before about the fact that we are collaborating with search engines, which are definitely contributing very much uh, to facilitate this discovery uh, uh, on the web about Agri's content next. And just this is my sli uh, last uh, a slide before we get and we invite our guest speakers and we open the questions and answers today for this first session. Uh, we have been working very hard to get as much content as possible in Agris, particularly since 2016. Uh, this is, uh, um, we, we, we get more or less about approximately one half a million, between half a million and a million new records every year, depending a little bit about um, about um, what the data providers are submitting. However, since this year, we have developed a tool that is helping us uh, to automatize the retrieval from uh, external repositories. Therefore, we can uh, do things more automatically. And this makes your life and our life much easier. And this is the reason why, for instance, um, recently, we have in six months increased 1.5 million, the number of bibliographic records that are now available in Agris. Said that, I hope that uh, this uh, was uh, next. Okay. I hope that this uh, was um, useful. I hope that this just warm up a little bit uh, this, first, um, this first session in our conference. There's a lot of other things I could explain in this first session, lots. Uh, but I try to be very concise and very specific since we will have also time to talk um, together later on if you are interested. Said that, I'm very pleased to say that these um, two persons, Justin Kisenga and Enrico Monayuti, agreed to be here today. They are both very busy people. So all the Agis team is very happy um, of, of this. Just for introducing a little bit Justin, um, Justin is the Capacity Development Officer and, um, and Team Leader of the Partnerships with Academia and Research Institutions in the Partnerships Unit of the Partnerships and UN Collaboration Division at FAO. And I would simply say as well that Justin was there and already working in Iris much earlier than when I took the ACRIS program. So I'm very glad that he is here today. And there is also Enrico Bonayuti. He is the team leader at monitoring, evaluation, and learning at the International Center for Agricultural Research in the dry areas, ICARDA. He is also the program management officer at the CGIR research program on roots, tubers, and bananas led by the International Potato Center. To both of them, I would like if you then can turn on the webcams and um, also the mics. And I would simply say that we could start with Justin Kisenga. Um, if you would like to start with your, your thoughts about Agris and your experiences with Agris um, since quite a lot of time, I would say. Thank you, Thank Justin. You. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Ima. Thank you, colleagues, from wherever you are, for participating in this, in my view, very important conference on Agris. And maybe to start, let me ask you two questions, which I don't want you to answer, but I want you to reflect on. How many times have you or your institutions participated in agricultural information management? and the data sharing initiatives or networks or programs, and maybe only to see them end almost abruptly 
and leaving you stranded. Some of you, or all of you, are you looking for a long-term and sustainable solution with a global public domain platform or, not, or network through which you can provide continuous access to your institution's agriculture sciences and technology, data or information, and at the same time, participate in the data knowledge sharing activities. I'm sure if you give it a thought, these two questions will resonate well with most of you, and more so maybe with colleagues from developing countries. Now, why do I begin with these two questions? The reason is because I want to emphasize one aspect of AGRIS that many of us have never thought about. And this came in as the result of my experience working on the AGRIS activities and other initiatives in Africa. AGRIS saves both developed and developing countries. And in my view, AGRIS can address the challenge I pose in the first question of participating in initiatives that all of a sudden disappears. And also the second question, which alludes to long-term sustainability of the initiative. As Ima indicated, AGRIS was operationalized in 1975, but of course the activities and work to set up Agris started way before 1975. And you and, and you and you take note that since then, if we take either 74, which is the year in which most of the activities and the, when the, a number of institutions were expressing interest to participate in Agris to today, we'll be talking about almost 47 years in operation which is not long, you see? It's, very, it's still very young. Some of us are older than 47 years. But believe you me, in this period, there are so many international initiatives that emerged and have, they have disappeared. Now, Agris's long-term life, in my view, is due to several factors. And these include, of course, commitment and investment by the, made by the key Agris stakeholders which among others, and him alluded to this, of course, the, 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 the governments, the institutions which are acting as agris hubs and the data providers, and also FAO's commitment and support to agris, which has included a lot of things, including the development of the documentation, the manuals, standards, and the tools to facilitate agricultural information management. And another factor is the fact that the agris is a public good. It's a good to which governments have asked their institutions to contribute to for the benefit of everybody. And the another factor is that agris has been able to adapt. Agris started in the years of mainframe computers. In the years when most of you were participating in Agris, we are using forms to complete your inputs. But nowadays, you all agree with me that you have gone digital, and Agris has gone digital. So Agris is a step ahead, and that or these factors have helped Agris to stay this far. And believe you me, they will also help Agris to stay and be there for another more years to come. And a very good example of the commitment some governments and institutions have made, I think I can cite one example, the government of India in 1974 when the negotiations were going on and the idea to set up Agris was, was agreed upon, the government committed itself to be working at least in, and participating in Agris through a national input center, which was to be based at the Indian Council of Agricultural Research. Today, the Indian Council of Agricultural Research is still participating in Agris. 
and contributing to the Agri's open data set. So you can imagine from almost the very beginning, the institution, the government, they have been committed to that. So with that commitment, Agri's has a long, 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 long life. And if we, you, if we invest in Agri's, at least we are guaranteed that uh, even our, if you may allow me, even our grandchildren and their children who have interest in agricultural information and knowledge management who will be working in this field, they will also be using Agris. And there are other institutions, and this will agree with me, and especially more from developing countries, that have also benefited in a way from being associated with Agris. IMA did indicate that the number of uh, data providers could be low in the sense that there were others in the past who could have been very active and along the way, due to various reasons, they may have fallen by the wayside. And this is the case for most institutions, especially in developing countries. But the benefits are still there and we can talk, that we can talk about. I, I, I'll give you an, 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 a, a, a few examples more of the names of the institution that I personally know benefited in a way. And these are institutions who had started contributing to Agris at the time when they may not even have had computers. They were using the input forms. But later on, when they started using digital technologies and they wanted to set up their own internal local databases, some of them moved and went to Agris to get the records and they populate their local databases. And here we can think of institutions like the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, of course in Kenya, Institute for Scientific and Technological Information, INSTI, which belongs to the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research in Ghana, Ethiopia Institute of Agricultural Research, National Agricultural Research Organization in Uganda. These are institutions that were active participants in the agris and one advantage they also benefited was the fact that even at the time when they had no access to the internet they had the, they were not using digital technology that much their literature could be seen by anyone around the globe their literature could be requested by anyone around the globe and of course there could have been challenges in the sense that Earlier on, Agris was not providing access to full text documents, but there was a mechanism in place supported by the network to ensure that if a request comes, the documents or the request could be honored. I think these are the major points that I wanted to illustrate. The sustainability or the long-term assured sustainability of Agris, which means that the investment that we are going to make you and me as institutions by participating in agris they are going to be very 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 long lasting that is one the second one is also the fact that and especially for institutions in developing countries agris can serve as a backup for our infrastructure i'm being practical i'm being practical and don't want to beat about the bush in some places, we have infrastructure that is not reliable. If we were in a position where we lost all our records, all our data, all our bibliography records, and the associated the full text, if we are providing any, and we want to rebuild, chances are that Agris will be there for us, and we can go back and re-harvest our contribution and start developing our local initiatives. I think these are the two important points I wanted to share with you colleagues. They are based on my experience of working with colleagues in the ministries of agriculture, the agricultural research institutions and universities in Africa. And in conclusion, my view is that Agris is a huge opportunity for a large number of institutions in developing countries. Thank you, Ima. Thank you, Justin. Thank you so much. Um, I just would like to remind everybody that if you need interpretation, remember there is an icon here in the bottom. It's, there is a world 
and that you can click on and you can select uh, a language if you that is not English in case that you need some help. Just think this was a very good uh, um, addition to uh, what I was saying before. Actually, you went even beyond <laughs> with your long experience with Agri, so I really appreciate it very much. Now I would like to bring uh, in uh, Enrico Bonayuti. Um, I hope that you can see him yep. now. Can, I hope that people can confirm because we had a little bit of problem before with, um, with the screens. Um, yes, Enrico, over yes. to you. Hi, can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank you, thank you, Hima, for this, and and really thanks, uh, uh, Justin, for uh, his uh, uh, insights. Because I I come from one institution, from my data provider, Icarda of Agris, and 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 I feel uh, uh, very in line with this. Um, as one of the world's uh, oldest bibliographic databases for agricultural science and technology, AGRIS really represents a gold standard in knowledge sharing uh, for agricultural research institution and organization worldwide. ICARDA has long benefited from the expertise of knowledge of AGRIS. This productive partnership began at ICARDA founding. Since then, AGRIS has appeared in countless reports and papers published by ICARDA and important collaboration have been forged with national research organizations. With today's rapid digitalization of research for development, the collaboration with AGRIS is further strengthened in partnership with the monitoring evaluation and learning team, MEL, which leads ICARDA efforts to share agricultural knowledge and reach in North Africa, Western Central Asia, and beyond. As an integral component of CGR, the world's largest agriculture innovation network within which ICARDA sits, MEL contributes to better target poverty, to enhance the uptake and maximize impact of the agricultural research outputs. It does so by improving the quality and effectiveness of knowledge management and agricultural data exchange. Alongside many other scientific research organizations dedicated to the same mission of open access knowledge sharing, AGRIS and MEL create more opportunities towards the sentiment of this meeting, which is uh, knowledge is key and sharing is vital to defeat hunger. Uh, working with and learning from AGRIS has helped MEL to increase agricultural knowledge, findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability in line with the FAIR principle. In particular, AGRIS long-term determination to promote equitable and free access to scientific knowledge and data is inspiring and something we must all emulate. A vital function of a platform like AGRIS maintained globally by FAO is that many national research organizations can still quickly and easily receive support to manage their research finding and store their metadata, even if they do not operate their own institutional repository. Further, AGRIS is suitable for several types of knowledge, such as academic papers, gray literature, and data set, and more, offering a high flexibility. For MEL, the AGRIS platform was crucial to support content in different languages, enabling us to expand knowledge sharing across countries, improve visibility and access to sciences, and the technical content of agricultural research. Over time, we have seen organizations and institutions dissolved or discontinued, and AGRIS has always been there to preserve the knowledge, heritage, and legacy, to make sure information remain accessible. In the case of ICARDA, who relocated abruptly from Syria in 2012, AGRIS guided us through quickly, creating digital records of our publication metadata. We now use AGRIS to search for our historical publication find the digital version and make it available in our own institutional repository. As an internationally recognized information system supported by FAO, AGRIS has the prestige and the audience to highlight and champion our research, reaching more people, exploring knowledge on food and agriculture, and make it a good investment for knowledge management rather than creation of parallel efforts. AGRIS is a key innovation to be embedded in national action and aid intervention proposal for better exchange of knowledge, information and data on food and agriculture. 
To conclude, I strongly believe in the continuous mutual commitment of both Agris and ICARDA towards open access knowledge management to enhance scientific knowledge, generate more impact, and play an important role in the achievement of UN Nation Sustainable Development Goals. Thank you. Thank you, Ima.